Hello, hello, this is Comrade Sirius and welcome to the second part of the Husak challenge and this time we read the storyline. I will try to make it fast and clear but you know there's a lot of things happening and uh, and all of this is based on real Czechoslovak history of from 1960 till recent time till today. So let's go. Uh, first thing that happens uh, or that comes into account for some period of time is the Comecon or the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance. This means you're only allowed to, act, to trade, to freely trade with uh, Eastern countries, so it means in rubles. You can, the things you can trade to West is electricity if needed, you can, and you can sell advanced products for valutas. As it, worked, as it has been called for foreign currency. Advanced products means uh, mechanical and electrical components, electronics, plastic, explosive, and the electricity I already told. You are not allowed to export anything else. You can, of course, sell their vehicles if they are, Western, if they are, if they are acquired on Western licenses. That is important. It needs to be Western vehicles. But, you know, things that arrive there and that, that can be bought on NATO border. And, of course, they need to be fully manufactured from your own resources produced on the territory of the Republic. Nothing else. So that's, that's what we do. That's how you can do it. That's how you can obtain, obtain those, those dollars if you need them. Well, the second rule is Prague Spring. It's called. It has. It, it's the thing that happened in 1968, and has come to its demise in August 1968. We currently celebrated or reminded ourselves of the 50 years, uh, 55 year anniversary, and it was like, yeah, it was a try for socialism with a human face, as it, as it has been called. Like, you know, some not so tight restrictions, maybe a little bit of, you know, free trade. But it didn't work. To make it short, this thing didn't work because... Uh, so Soviet country, especially, you know, in Soviet Union, led by Brezhnev and, and company, they decided that, well, that's not for, that's not for us, that doesn't belong to what Soviets like. So, armies of five states of Warsaw Pact, basically the whole Warsaw Pact, if we exclude us and Romania, they have invaded us on the night of from 20th to 21st August, and it really broke uh, belief in communism in many people, including some communists, there has been set of tri series of trials or you know processes that it, it, it was a goal that it, it, the whole, whole point of it was to throw to throw away people that has that has been pro-revolutionary. Funny thing is this challenge is named Husak Challenge and Augustin Husak or he's called Gustav. Um, he was basically part of the revolutionary group, but after visiting Moscow, he quite fast found out that this is not the way to go. So he changed his mind 180 degrees and came back as really anti-reformist. We can say, we can say, we can say, and. So it happened, and he has become the general secretary, and shortly after, the president of communist Czechoslovakia, which he, both of which we, he lasted almost in like 15 years. That's quite, and that was quite a feat. That was quite a feat, to be honest. So that's it. Uh, what's, what's the effect? Stop babbling about history lessons. It's an interesting one, but you're here for the rules. And from now on, there's absolutely ban on Western tourism. 
you are not you won't allow any western agents in your country so no tourism from the west and you're closing borders almost in general so you are allowed one hotel in your capital city only one hotel on the whole map but it probably should be in the capital city for you know delegations political visits and so on you can stuff this one and that's all and of course you need to throw away some people that are not you know compliant enough with the regime so it's up to you how you will do it but you have to in between September 1968 including September uh, to December 1969 so 16 months period you need to force to emigrate or die it's up to you 600 people the larger your republic at this point will be the easier this goal is but it's up to you to make it this rule this emigration this forced emigration is sort of a decent it's not an optional goal if you fail this one you're not ending but this one failing this one counts as unfulfilled five year plan so if you remember the rule from Perez Perestroika you'll just place a warehouse if you are allowed you'll place a free warehouse and say no immigration or you know just 1968 Prague Spring and that's it it can also help you if you're really tight on budget if you're really tight on people and you need them for future goals this one you can miss without losing the challenge that's it that's the Prague Spring 600 immigration uh, immigration till December 1969 and of course no tourism since September no western tourism since 9 September 1968 and only one hotel per republic since then well the next next rule is directly connected or the next event after you ended the Prague Spring and the uh, immigration part which, because you know December 1969 starts the era of normalization that has happened and it was its goal was to form, to allow only loyal people to serve the regime you you know forced to emigrate the disloyal or not so loyal so we'll do the same starting on school year and university year as well in 1970 your university edu your university professors are in ha well, are allowed they have to they absolutely have to have the loy their loyalty of at least 50 percent there is no way of avoiding it you just have to do it if you will fail this one you're you haven't survived normalization and there have been a lot of politicians in real life that haven't survived it so it's not a shame but your game ends and you need to try again or there's no no avoiding no free no get out of jail free card nothing like that you have to have at least 50 percent loyalty at this point so that's it 1970 at least from september all university professors have to have at least 50 percent loyalty and we can continue right away because we are approaching year 1973 as we are passing the big hospital in this city the they are hospital and you know healthcare related in year 1973 in at this point in history there has been a generation that's called Husak's children Husakovi Yeti, because the party wanted I won't say desperately, but they really wanted to increase birth rates to have more children, you know, better civilization, population growth. So they 
Epic, they made few rules and laws, they passed few laws, like, you know, easier, e e easier money and, you know, loans on flats and things like this. For, you know, newly married, newly married or kids as well, or people with new kids as well. And it uh, basically happened in 1970s at the start. So in now, in 1973, when it should be in full swing, it should be in full swing in your republic as well. So let's create your own Hussak's children. After all, this is called the Hussak challenge. So by the end of 1973, you need to have at least one working, that's the good point, working orphanage. And also you need to have a medical university and either have, have already finished or at least start researching the increased birth rate research by the end of 1973. Again, if you fail, you haven't fulfilled the party's goal and the orders from Moscow or from the Kremlin to be more precise. And your rule is simply, you know, succeeded by another one which is something you definitely want to avoid so no gulag you do not want to gulag well here's your orders do as general secretary and the party wishes well now comes a more check goal that's why we're looking at the railway station that's in from Czech or Czechoslovakia former uh, that's, this is the thing we are now here in year 1977 and this is the year that happened the, the Charta 77 it's been a union sort of a union of mostly performers and artists and like singers things like and the people like this that they really wanted to have you know, more freedom of speech. They really don't like the operation of normalization and things like this. And to be fair, the regime wasn't prepared for it at all. So what happened? It was persecution. Also things like forced emigrations again. And but a lot of a lot of times there were political processes and most of them were sent to prison for some made-up cases like crimes against the state and things like this and it was between three and mostly between three and five years there even few people died when they were you know examined i don't know it's ex examined them you know when they were interrogated and things like it was a nasty time but Communists weren't really successful that much, but so because the Charta, while not having general knowledge and general acknowledgement throughout the whole population, they never really disappeared after the, after the year 77. We all knew about them a bit, so it was a partly success, we can tell, but hey. What you need to do is to fulfill another order. You are told, and you your goal is that every every uh, every minor offense has to be punished severely. So, since 1977, minimum sentences for easy, medium, and hard crimes are five, six, and seven years, as was probably the reality with all artists as they are called so since 1977 minimum sentence length is five six and seven years for each crime well and starting now comes come two largest and the last points of you know the modern history of Czechoslovakia First of them, and they are closely related, so we are going to do two of them, both of them with this train in, this train in sight. First of them is 
Velvet Revolution. It is a peaceful step out from the power from communist regime because all those problems were piling up. Even if due to Perestroika and Glasnost and you know these reforms, they really didn't help because well they did help us but they didn't help the regime to survive. So at 17th November 17th of November 1989, the communist peacefully stepped out of power after a series of diplomatic meetings. The key to that was probably a lot of diplomacy and you know just not sending them directly to gallows. That's why Czech Republic and well Czech Republic has still a party political party in democratic system that is called communist and is and that name is not for banned forbidden banned anything it is not which is strange and seems strange but yeah this was part of the deal so what does that mean what does that mean since velvet revolution so basically since december 19 89. You have no bans on tourism. You can have Western and Eastern tourists at any amounts you like again. And now for good. Also, you have become part of the greater world. The Eastern, the Iron Curtain has fallen and the Soviet Union is in troubles. So you can trade with anyone you want, with any resource you like. Which still with respect to rule number three, that is export is allowed only of things you fully manufactured. But now you can export even boards to West if you really like. And you will probably need to do it at some point to fulfill the export goals. The last thing of obviously is that you have freedom again in your sentence length, so no more. Carta 77 things, so after these 12 years, you are free at this again as well. And the second part is just year after that, since January 1991, is the is the this dispersion of Comic Con and the of and definitely this definitely dissolving of the USSR. Uh, what does that mean? Since January 1991, you are not allowed to trade, to export things in rubles because your economy has fully trans, has fully went to international currency, which is U.S. dollars. That that man that the currency of international trade. So trade, not trade, international trade. So that's what you will do. Now the things you can trade it to the, with in rubles is again electricity, tourism. You can buy vehicles from there, any road vehicles from there as well. Still, it's not a big problem. Road vehicles. And the last thing is you can sell their secondhand vehicles. If you do not know how to do it, I will share a little secret with you. Because you, what you can do is that now with you know demolition and things on, you cannot just click a vehicle and sell it because it will result in money. But you can send vehicles to vehicle and container depots like this one, and you can select a vehicle to load it. You know it's you know car sales auto bazaar in Czech because I'm original from Czech Republic. And you can just then, once the vehicle will fill with with different with different small vehicles usually, it will just go to border and sell it for remaining value like it was before. The only thing that happened and that changed since then is that you are no longer allowed to just click and sell. You need to have it carried. So that's all.
there's the storyline of Soviet of so of cha challenge in workers and resources Soviet Republic. That's the storyline of Huzak Challenge. You have been watching footage from my current series that is running in Czech, so probably not a huge point in looking in looking at it. But I hope you like the city and the traveling through it. And I will put I will try to put the link to the Steam page, but I'm a new this is a new YouTube account, so YouTube doesn't like it. Once it will be allowed I will definitely add the link to the Steam page of this challenge down in the description. Till that point there will be only the summarization of rules and the storyline, so if you haven't catched anything you can just look at it anytime you want to. I hope you will have a good fun. I know there's a lot of information, but there are on the Steam page of this challenge there are also some overviews and summaries of all those things. And it's basically a one page with big letters, so you don't need to. It's 8 plus 2 rules and like 7, 7 events. I think that for the whole game it's not that much. So, have a nice day. I hope you like everything you saw. You did, did saw even those brighter nights. If you if you need, just ask, and I will post my parameters for the for the night for the inner files of the night. And that's it. Goodbye.